So this is the first stretch and commercial of carpet that we've had in a while. So I just wanted to point out how I get some good results with my uh, seams. First off, I used one of these little comb row finders. And um, I got marked uh, probably four or five, six inches past the wall there just to be safe. And I'm going to come over about an inch. I don't like to get right on the edge. And um, before I go too far, I want to go ahead and get my cut started that way because look right here real close. You can't even hardly see where my row finder has been. Just barely a little thing. And if I go do my whole thing, then I'm not going to be able to really see where it is. So I'll get my cut started first and then I'll carry on. Um, the difference about commercial carpet and barbers and regular carpets with the row cutter uh, most of the time we would use the blade on the side of carpet that we're going to use. On commercial carpet we actually want to use the opposite blade. So on this cut, this way right here, right here, so because we're using this piece, I'm using the blade on that side of my cutter, okay? It, what happens, these are so tight together, it'll actually shave the sides of your, of your nap right there and, and it'll make it look bad. So you use the opposite side blade to cut your row, uh, to cut your rows on commercial carpet, and it'll leave a nice, pretty edge. I'll show you here. Okay, Ben's I got started. I'm gonna go ahead and just run my whole row out. Now it should just stay right in there. Check it out. Really close, get real close right there. There's no cut fibers or anything like that. Now the side. Oops, stop right there. Smack. Even this side right here is good. Well, I actually got a little bit, a little bit of cut fibers right there, which would have been on my piece here had I used the other blade. So that's why I choose to use the other side of the blade. So Vince, we got this. Cut. And it is a commercial carpet. While we got it folded back, we're gonna run a we're gonna run a bead of latex sealer on it. So come on up here closer. You don't have to get it real crazy, you just put your little bead, just a little bead right. See that? Just do that right there. Let me get my hand right. There we go. I'm gonna go the full length of the seam. Just leaving about an eighth inch bead. Ooh, I got a little close right there. Let that run over on the map. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Some people might put it on the side like that. Well, that gives you chances of uh, making a mess on your nap. So I'll show you how I do it. You choose, you can do it however you choose, but this is just how I do it, which I don't do it very often. I very rarely do use seam sealer, but this uh, is a special request to use seam sealer on this job. Unless it's a glue down, I always use the same sealer on glue downs. Okay. So I just take my stair tool, watch this come real close right here. I'm just going to use it like a trowel, see that, and just mash it right in the back of the carpet. That's, that's going to strengthen that up bad. Notice the angle, using it just like a trowel. Anyways, that's how I that's how I sell them. 
getting ready to make a head seam and commercial carpet. Um, I wish I had some secret remedy to make everything easier. Um, unfortunately, the only thing I know to do is just to straight edge it and get as clean as cut as possible. But this thing, the seamer down there, does help a lot. And um, this really is where this shines is on commercial carpet. I'll show you this on all the seams. Immaculate. Get this. Again, I get this headpiece done. I hope that's in a good spot. Now, like I said, this is just a seam sealed. I mean, uh, it is seam sealed. See that? But it's just straight edged and cut as clean as I could possibly get it. I got my iron too high right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that down a little bit. Can you see that? About one and a half and let it set and cool off for a minute. I didn't think about that. Actually, I'll just push it real fast for a minute. Just don't wanna get the back of this uh, commercial carpet too hot because it will definitely make your scene look horrible. Once again, I am using a smooth roller as always. Push that together just a little bit with the kicker. And set that up.
Okay, so you definitely want to trim the least as amount as possible. If you keep trimming and keep trimming and keep trimming, you're going to leave a little fuzzy streak in the carpet, which you don't want. It's going to make your seam stand out. So only do the necessity trimming. Okay. I think I'm going to be okay with that right there. Yeah, I wish I could uh, figure something else a, lot, a little better about that, but that's about all I can do on commercial head seams. So right here we got a, um, a row cut uh, seam in commercial carpet. I just want to show it going together and how flat and tight it gets using the seamer down now. And um, also using the methods of using the opposite sides of the of the row cutter blades as I explained a while ago. There you go. to you to about right there keep going oh, okay a little bit okay
wanted to show what we've done here. This is kind of a, a weird shaped room. Vince, we got a seam here. We had a seam over here and a seam down the hallway. So what I did, I actually did the seam in the hallway first. Kicked that hallway all the way back. I folded this whole corner over like, like you would a paper airplane all the way to this point right here. To this point right here. Put my tailpiece of the stretchers on that and I, because I was able to kick way down there that was like way past it was like an inch past it there maybe even more I don't know but anyway I put my tailpiece on the baseboard stretched all the way up the hallway got it tied off here I came in here got this seam right here got this thing all lined up ready to go tied it off up in that corner Got my stretches up here with my seam still ready to go. Now I can make my seam here. Finish stretching that way. And Jerry's finishing this side of the hallway. And we'll continue up taking this room that direction. So I hope you was able to follow that. That was a little bit uh, tricky on how to get all that stuff in there like that. So I just wanted to and, and get it all the same way. And I stretched this piece this way, made the same stretch that that way. This part would have had no stretch on it at all because if I stretch this way, I'm gonna put some numbers to it so you understand it. If I put 20 press, pounds of pressure that way, and then I stretch this this way at 20 pounds of pressure that way, where's, where's the stretch at? That equals zero. 20 that way and 20 that way equals zero so this would have no stretch so you have to stretch both these the same direction in order to get some stretch on them.